Asahi Linux is that project to run Linux on a bare metal M1 Mac. And every single time that I or anybody else mentions Asahi Linux, you always get the exact same question. What is the point of Asahi Linux? If you're buying an M1 Mac and trying to run Linux on it, it's going to have horrible performance anyway, and you want to be running Mac OS because that's what's actually made for it. And all of that, totally valid. So let's talk about what the point of Asahi Linux actually is. Right now, if you want to daily drive Linux and get the best possible experience, you pretty much want to avoid most pre-built systems. There are some exceptions, like from companies that specifically make Linux hardware or have Linux SKUs of their hardware, for example, from Dell and Lenovo. But for the best chance of getting good experience, you want to handpick every single component going into your system. You'll spend time going over forum posts, checking out what compatibility is like, looking into drivers and all of that fun stuff. And eventually, you'll get a really good system. But most people don't have that luxury. Either they don't have the time for it, or they don't have the extra money to buy a whole new computer. So most people, when they want to try out Linux, are going to try it out on what they currently have. And maybe you got interested in Linux while you were still a Mac user, and that's perfectly fine. Sure, you could always go and run it inside of a VM, and that's going to be great. But at some point, if you actually feel like Linux is the thing for you, you're probably going to want to go and run it on hardware. And right now most of the options are still fairly alpha, Asahi being one of those. But with more work, maybe that's going to be something that's actually a legitimate option. Or maybe you just really care about the M1 hardware. You don't really care about macOS itself. What you care about is the M1 CPU and how powerful it actually is. No one can argue that the M1 CPU isn't an absolutely incredible CPU and it isn't an x86 CPU. In the consumer space, there's not really any options in that performance range. Sure, there are things in like the low power range like Raspberry Pis and you have the smartphone space, which are all ARM based as well. But at the level of the M1 Mac, I don't think anything exists in the consumer space. Now, obviously, RC Linux is years away from actually effectively making use of the M1 Mac hardware. I believe even today, it doesn't actually have GPU drivers, so everything is being rendered in software on the CPU. But given enough time, even without support directly from Apple, it's going to get closer and closer and closer, even having to go and reverse engineer everything. Will it ever be one-to-one -one with macOS? I don't know, maybe not. But to say that just because it's never going to be at the level of macOS, it just shouldn't be done, doesn't really make any sense to me. Now, if we're going to be talking about raw performance, yes, there are cheaper systems that you can build or buy pre-built that outperform the current M1 Max on the market. And that's, I think, totally fair to say. But also, I don't think it really matters in this case because I have this M1 system sitting in front of me and I want to use it. I don't really care if other things exist. They don't really matter to me right now. And maybe it's not just the internals you care about, maybe you care about the design of the device itself. Maybe you like the Apple screens, maybe you like their keyboards, maybe you like their industry-leading touchpad. Honestly, that's one of the few things I really do like about the Apple laptops or any of the other things that might influence your design choices. And sure, you might say that's just a stupid argument. But I'm not going to sit here and say that that's a bad reason to use a computer. If that's why you bought it, that's totally valid. But it's also important to consider that even though the current M1 Macs are still fairly new and shiny, that's not always going to be the case. Over time, they're going to be replaced with newer models. Maybe they'll go back to x86. Maybe they'll stay with M1. I don't really know what's going to happen. But at some point, the devices we have right now are going to start to age a bit. Even though Apple is fairly good at supporting their devices compared to most of the rest of the industry, at some point... Apple is going to stop giving these devices software updates. So at that point, if the device is still perfectly fine, like you can still use it, maybe it's not as fast as the newest devices on the market, but it does everything you need. Does that mean the device then has to just go into landfill? If you say yes, I hope you don't own an old ThinkPad because that's literally the whole ThinkPad idea. Reviving these old devices by installing Linux. Because sure, you could probably install Windows 10 on like a 10 or a 15 year old ThinkPad, someone correct me if I'm wrong there, but if you do that, 
it's probably going to be pretty slow, but there are fairly lightweight Linux distros that make the device actually still feel like a relatively modern device. So let's say 10 years from now, you go into eBay and pick yourself up a first generation M1 Mac. You slap Linux on it through like RC Linux or whatever project exists at the time, and then you have still a fairly good computing experience. Sure, as I said, not the quickest thing out there, but if that's all you need, well... That's perfectly fine then. But if none of that makes sense to you, ultimately it's just for the love of the tech. What's the point of running Linux on a GameCube, on a PS4, on a Wii U, or any of the other countless projects for running Linux on a console? Sure, you can argue that homebrew is cool. Yeah, I can run emulators on my PS4 so I can play like PS2 games on my PS4. Sure, that's cool. But if you have a reasonably powerful PC, your PC will be able to do it better. The reason why you do it is because you just think the tech is cool. And yes, Apple absolutely has questionable business practices when it comes to things like right to repair. If you want to hear more about that, go watch Lewis Rossman's channel and he'll talk about it in much more detail than I will ever be able to do so. But if we just step back and look at the M1 chip as a piece of silicon, forgetting about Apple and all that fun stuff, if you just care about hardware, it's hard to say the M1 chip is not cool. Ultimately, Asahi Linux and the work they're doing is not for everyone, but they never stated that was their goal. They never said, oh, we're going to get Linux running on the M1 Mac, then everybody who owns an M1 Mac is just going to run Linux on it, and everyone who isn't running an M1 Mac is going to buy one and then run Linux on it. Like, that's just not something they ever said. But there is a small group of people who do care about running Linux on a Mac. It was a bigger group back when they were using x86 systems. There is still a group now, though, that wants to see this happen. And I think that RC Linux should make that happen. Obviously, this is not a perfect metric, but combining both their Patreon with 1,000 people and their GitHub sponsors with 288... There's clearly at least a small community of people who want to support this and want to see it actually happen. I don't support it because I don't run an M1 Mac and I don't really care to buy one, but if you do, I fully encourage you to go and support these projects. What I will be doing though is anytime I see the RC Linux put out something really cool, like let's say they get GPU drivers working or they get Wi-Fi drivers working or something like that, expect me to do a video on it because even though I don't care to actually run it myself, I still like to follow the project and I like to see what's actually being done because they're not getting support from Apple. Sure, there's things the Apple engineers are doing to not stop them, but when it comes to things like documentation or drivers or anything like that, everything has to be reverse engineered. And that is just a really cool engineering feat. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Maybe you own an M1 Mac and at some point you want to run Linux on it, or maybe you just think the project is cool like me and you just want to see what they can actually do. I would love to know. And if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to go and support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stanley Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea, a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays, and that's going to be it for me. So, I'm out.